Well, I want to welcome everybody today. Um, thank you so much for coming out and learning some more about Leadership Grand Stram. Um, I'm Diana Green. I'm the executive director for the program. Um, I'm in my 16th year with Leadership Grand Strand. It's hard to imagine. Um, in my other life, I also serve as the chief of administration for the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber. And I'm, gonna, I'm, in, I'm in my 20th year on that one. So I um, spent a lot of time at the chamber. And of course, Leadership Grand Strand is one of the programs of the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce. Later on, you're going to be introduced to Eileen Soison, and she's going to tell you about the leadership training portion of our program. But for now, what we're going to do is get started, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the program and where it started. We actually um, are in our 41st year, which is so hard for me to imagine. Um, we're actually the second oldest leadership program in the state. Our founder, Bill Pritchard, actually went to the state program, loved it, but said we could do this locally, and we should do this locally. So they actually started Leadership Grand Strand at that point. So it's really neat that we've been going for 41 years continually. Um, we have over 1,100 graduates of the program. And these are folks that you meet all over the community who are doing some wonderful work. We also are managed by a 16 member board of regents. All of them are past class members. Each year, three regents are elected by their class to actually come and serve on the board of regents. And then we also have options for folks to come in and be at large um, members of our board of directors. But again, they have to be a previous person who actually had gone through one of our classes. What's great about that is the new board members as they rotate on from the class really give us that insider input as to what went well during the year, perhaps what didn't. Um, and the at large is bring all that great history back with them and um, a new sort of um, input for us. And so it's really neat that we combine those two things. And I think it's one of the things that keeps the program fresh and keeps us moving forward each year. I'm not gonna read the five objectives of the program. <laughs> Let me just put this in a very, very simple way. What we're really looking for is we want to find people who want to be engaged in our community, who want to go out and make a difference, make the Grand Strand a better place to live, work, and play. And really, everything about the program is set up for that. Um, it's a chance to learn a lot of behind-the-scenes information about how things work. It's also a great chance to get some fantastic leadership training and really kind of challenge yourself to move forward. So really, again, these five objectives, what we really want is to find those people who are ready, they're engaged, they want to get out there and make a difference, whether it's through a nonprofit, whether it's serving on a city council, um, any of those types of things. There are so many ways you can make a difference in our community. And that's what Leadership Grand Strand was really founded on, was getting people in and getting them involved. It is a nine month course. Um, we actually start with an orientation session in August. We only take a maximum of 33 students each year. Um, we like to keep our class about that size. Um, some years we take less, and, um, but the max we've ever gone is 33. It's a good size for the class and a good chance for people to get to know each other and interconnect. Um, we start in August, we run through May. We have a two day retreat in September and I've had a lot of people asking me, well, you know, with everything going on with COVID-19, are you still gonna have a two day retreat? Well, right now we are planning for that. And our expectation is that we will be able to go. We go to um, the WAPI Conference Center. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it in Panopolis. If you haven't been there, it is just the neatest place. And it's a great place to kind of get to know and interact um, with your classmates. Um, if something happens and with the regulations related to COVID, we're not able to go and do this, we'll do a combination of online and a combination of maybe some meetings with social distancing. So we've already started talking internally about what do we need to do if we need to change this up. So keep that in mind. If you're thinking about applying, but you're not quite sure, um, we will actually be looking at what are the best practices for the time frame, and we will implement that. And also guys, we meet the first Thursday of every single month. So when you start with us, um, we have orientation in August, then uh, September your retreat. And then from there, October through May, you're gonna meet the first Thursday of each one of those months. And we have a variety of topics you're gonna cover. And I'll go through those too. Tourism, of course, is one of the big ones. Um, we talk a lot about our tourism industry and what's going on with that. You'll see on here listed everything from economic development to government politics. Um, of course, I mentioned leadership development, small businesses, um, law enforcement. Um, one of the pictures you see up here is us actually getting on a bus. 
one of the neat things that we do is we have an optional day where you can actually go, we visit the state house, um, meet with some of our local elected leaders um, who are representing us there. And then we actually go to the Grand Strand Legislative Reception. And it's a really neat opportunity to learn about what we do and how we interact with state government here. Um, it's a wonderful, again, opportunity, but it is one of the optional things that you can do in the program. Now, a lot of these other ones as they're taking place, we actually are trying to do as much as we can to take you out. So we go out, we visit different areas, we see how things work. Um, and some of the ones that you might find when you get involved in the program, you're like, why are we going there? And then when it's over, what I always hear from everyone is that was amazing. I had no idea. And I get that all the time. And that's one of the really neat things about Leadership Grand Strand is you do kind of get into things and learn about things that you might not otherwise have known about. Um, so it's a really um, neat thing to do, and I enjoy it every year, and I learn something every year. Every, every time we're going to these sites and these locations, I'm learning things that have changed since the last time I was there. So I, I feel lucky. I, I get to do the program every year, so I'm a very fortunate person for that. Now we're going to turn it over to Ms. Eileen Soyson. We are so fortunate to have her. She is our leadership trainer for the program. Eileen, how long have you been with us now? Since class 30. So I have had the privilege of working with 11 classes and looking forward to who gets in the next class because every class is so unique and so different and they create their own class story and brand. So I'm they excited really do. the next class. They do. I'm going to turn it over to you, Eileen. All right. So um, I'd love to share just a little bit of what we get to do through LGS with our leadership development. And Diana, myself, and the Board of Regents really work together to put together a curriculum that we think will best prepare you as leaders to go back into our local community and lead in the best way that you feel called to. One thing I love about the class is that no two classmates are the same. One person might have a passion for nonprofits, someone else might have a passion for, passion for starting their own business, or maybe it's to change the political game. You just don't know why people come into our program, but every person finds something unique in it. So I hope that's something that each of you are looking for is a place that you can find your leadership home and hone those skills. And I think with the classmates that you have through the leadership development, I'm a little biased, it will help you to uh, grow as a community leader because that's what our goal is. The next slide, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit of who I am, so you know who would be your leadership development coordinator and facilitator. So I'm originally from Pennsylvania. My undergrad is from Penn State, so yes, you will hear a lot of we are's, uh, but my Pennsylvania upbringing definitely wanted me to expand and see more than Pennsylvania. So hospitality was my background. So I worked for the American Hospitality Academy for 11 years as their director of training and development and love that, love the world of hospitality and was able to live all over. And the Florida Keys, and you'll see a picture there on the top right, that's Hawks Cay Resort Marina, which is a resort I manage their recreation program and just love that world of hospitality. So you'll hear some examples of me talking about travel and tourism, hospitality, which fits in Myrtle Beach and definitely how I can use that background. After that, if you've worked in hospitality, you know it can burn you out and you try to find something else that you can use your gifts. So I actually started my own business called The Meeting Institute, and that was to work with businesses and organizations to grow their customer service and leadership programs. So I did that for about 10 years, and then you see that cute kid in that picture, and he was five, and I realized I needed to stay home more. So I was approached by Coastal Carolina University, go Shants, and I get to work there now full time. I am the Director of Training and Development and Service Excellence and have worked at Coastal now for eight years. Um, my involvement in LGS and Coastal are, are not really connected. I actually do them as two separate functions, but I do use some Coastal experience to share uh, with what I've learned as a leader um, in that type of setting. So I hope that you hear my background and it intrigues you and please know that I've worked with many companies such as Audi of America, US Army, parks and rec agencies all over the country to provide leadership programs. So this is my passion, I absolutely love it. But I, like Diana, I'm gonna echo what she said. I usually learn more from my class than they probably learn from me. So know that if you apply to LGS, I expect 
to see you in that classroom, participating, sharing, stepping up, because we learn from the room, not from the front of the room. So I really hope that's something you hear loud when you think about applying to LGS, because we don't want it to be a lecture. We want it to be involvement, discussion, dialogue, and that's where you all come in. So that's a little bit about who I am. Um, I'm sure you're curious as to what will we learn more about while sitting in a classroom. Diana went over with you the community development topics. What we hope to do is take these leadership topics and you apply them within those areas. So you, you heard about our retreat. Um, I wanted to show you what we did last year, knowing that we're not secure in the dates yet. So don't look at these dates and write them down. This is just to give you an idea of the spacing of how we do the leadership classes in between your other community involvement classes. So we start off with your retreat and we start with the self profile assessment. I'm assuming as many of you on this call know about assessments because you're already leaders, uh, but we do the self profile assessment and we do that to bring everyone together and understand the different types. And we use that to build as a team, as a class in the beginning. We then go over the leadership challenge. So if right now some of you are wondering, hmm, I wonder what books I could read, start with the leadership challenge because we will be going over that. Uh, we will talk about the five ways to model the way, inspire a vision, challenge the process, enable others to act, and encouraging the heart. So if that fits in line with where your leadership theory is, that's how we start. And we encourage our leaders to do that throughout the nine months. What we ask then is for them to build on that. So our retreat is really a solid start to your leadership journey as a class. And one thing I love about the retreat is we learn that we have new leaders and we have veteran leaders and so many people can learn from each other. So if some of you are, are watching this thinking, well, I'm just so brand new at leadership or I've done this before, there is a place for you. So I really encourage you to look at these topics and see what can you bring to the table, not just what can you learn. Our next topic um, for now that we discuss is multi-generational leadership. I think you would agree that we have four to five generations in the workplace and that's not always as easy as it seems. So we open up all the viewpoints of all the generations and we talk about communication, relationships, work ethics, experiences, family, how that plays into how you lead. So that is actually a longer class. Some of you are probably wondering how long are the classes? Typically they're two hours, except for our start, our retreat, and our last day. But typically they're between two to three hours. And I think you should be encouraged to know that it started with one to two and your former classmates who have gone before you said they wanted more. So I hope you also hear that LGS is very flexible and willing to work. We listen to evaluations every year from our classmates. So the topics that you see on the screen, a lot of that came from suggestions from our class. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do see some changes. For example, the last session we had changed last year to adjust to COVID-19. Instead of talking about leaving a legacy in a typical world, we actually talked about how do you leave a legacy during this change of COVID-19. So know that we will flex the topics if there's something relevant going on. Uh, we will adapt and we will pivot in the words of Ross from Friends. So February, we talk about building your leadership brand. So those of you of leaders who are thinking, oh, does that mean I have to speak up and public speak? Yes, yes it does. As leaders, sometimes you get three minutes to pitch your story, pitch your idea, pitch your proposal. I wanna be able to work with you and help you through that so that people are listening and responding so that you can use your leadership influence for good. So we will talk about how to build your leadership brand and you will have some actual experiential learning and practicing with that. So don't say you weren't warned, but trust me, it's one of those things that people fear it and then afterwards they're like, I'm so glad you made me do that. And yes, they say made me. March 5th, the March one, uh, this is one of my favorites. We talk about personal accountability. Uh, this is one of my non-negotiables as a leader. I feel if we take responsibility, we need to take accountability right with it. So we'll talk about that and what that means and how it's different than maybe how some of you might think accountability is just a bunch of blame. It's not. 
So we'll talk about that. And then what we want to do is test how did you grow as a team? I love seeing in those months how your class will grow, communicate, call each other out while lifting each other up. But I think you'll see a really uh, cohesive class come together by then. And then we get to the end, which is, believe it or not, a sad time because it goes really, really fast. You will hear from classes ahead of you that it goes fast. So this might look like a long time, but when May comes, the last class, it's a full day as of now. And we just hone in our skills that we learned as leaders. We also do a lot of reflection, sharing out, and lifting each other up. So we have these classes set up for you to hone your leadership skills, but to grow as a class. So please don't feel like if you haven't had any leadership classes, you'll be behind. We all start together and we grow together as a group. So I hope that those are topics that you're interested in. Um, please know I asked for feedback at orientation to see if I can tweak it, if there's anything that you're particularly looking for, and I do include those. So know that your voice is heard. Um, it's a safe space. Uh, we really try to make this uh, an area to grow. And I'm a big uh, Will Ferrell fan, so anything I can include with sarcasm, leadership is kind of a big deal. Follow it along. I try to make things fun and engaging like a little anchor man. So I look forward to meeting those of you who get into the program. I do want to stress, I know this is off the script, but not everyone does get into this program. So as your facilitator, I really want to tell you and give you the advice. When you do that application, when you fill out that resume, know that we are looking for the best 33 people to sit in that classroom. I'm looking for the best of Myrtle Beach. So I hope that you take this very seriously. And if this is something you want more information on, I'm more than willing to help or answer any questions. And Wonderful. That's Thank you. Thank you. Great. Right. Well, as y'all can see, we have an amazing leadership trainer. We're so fortunate to have uh, Ms. Eileen with us. Um, truly, we are. Uh, one of the other areas that we cover um, is community service. And the community service projects are really big and important part of what we do. And that's because, again, we really are trying to build people, get them, and get them in the direction of helping our community and making it a better place to live. Um, so this past year, the class had 75 project hours they were required to do outside the class. Um, this particular year, um, again, to Eileen's point, we're looking for what's happening around us, what's relevant. And one of the big things that everyone, of course, is talking about is the Myrtle Beach downtown redevelopment. So we wanted to do a project that really was about that and sort of about what's happening in the city of Myrtle Beach. And it was really neat. Our class actually went out and um, repainted a kind of a restroom area that also was very dark, put up lighting, did a lot of really neat things and just, just to beautify the area. And the goal being that we want to show the community these are the things that we can do. We can all have our part in this redevelopment. Um, and so it was really just neat to watch them come together to go through the process. It was such a good learning process too because they had to go before city council and they had to go before the community appearance board. So again, it was an opportunity to learn how something works that otherwise they probably wouldn't have known. So we loved getting them involved there. Um, we also give some hours to the Andabak Leadership Award, and I'm gonna discuss that just a little bit more later when we get to the alumni portion. This year we also work for Habitat for Humanity, <clears throat> New Directions, and we work with Horry County Schools. And these are all really important areas. Every year though, we change this up. So this is what we've done. Next year may be a little different. We may have some new things that we wanna share with you and new things we wanna expose you to so that you're aware of what's happening in our community. But um, it's been interesting because so many of our class members have gotten involved with these organizations. And what's really neat is how many of them now are actually volunteering beyond LGS or getting on the boards, um, doing different things to get further involved. And I love that because, again, that is really what we're here for. So um, it's a neat process. It's something that I think that as much as, um, as Eileen said, people don't want to always have to get up and speak in front of the class. This is another one where I find people get really nervous. But keep in mind, these 75 hours are over the course of the entire program. 
It's not as hard as you think it will be. And in the end, people always come back and say, wow, I'm so glad I did that. I'm so glad I got involved. I would have never thought of it. So um, I highly encourage you to think about that. And also you can use some personal hours for the program. So I'm betting some of you are probably already out there and engaged, involved in something that you love and want to continue to be involved with. So we will give you some personal hours that you can also log for that. And hopefully you're going to teach us about whatever you're involved in so that it might, it's something we can learn about and perhaps do something with in the future. Our alumni association is really neat. So once you go through the program, one of the things we found is that people were so connected into LGS, they wanted to be more involved. So we've come up with an alumni association that has social gatherings at least two to three times per year. Obviously right now, we've kind of had to put that on hold. Um, we do newsletters, we kind of do updates about what's happening, relevant information for um, our alumni. And we have our Anne de Bock Leadership Award. Anne de Bock was originally the first executive director for the program. And she was actually the executive director until she passed away. Um, was a neat lady, um, very community oriented. And so we actually now have a leadership award that um, our alumni are actually able to be nominated for. And what we're looking for again, and the whole really the premise of the award is we want to highlight what these amazing people are out in the community doing. And it's so neat. We choose, we, the class actually chooses four nominees that they are going to put forward and they do presentations on them. They tell us all about them. Um, the, we have a selection committee and then they're going to actually vote on them. But we also take the class's input. Um, we ask the class to vote um, as well and tell us which of the presentations they also felt like really put that person forward. So it was really neat to watch. I frequently have people tell me again that um, they were really nervous when they heard about this. They weren't sure what to do, but that as they met this person, they interviewed them, they learned about this potential person who might be the Andabak Leadership Award winner. They were so inspired. They wanted to go out and do more. And um, that to me is really what the program's about. Um, what I love though, is that this gives us a chance to honor for people because we honor all of the nominees for a given year for the program. And then of course, one person is selected as the award winner. We have a big gathering, um, the Andabuck Leadership Awards Social, where we actually highlight all of them and we celebrate their accomplishments. Because again, for us, what this program is about is getting people out and engaged in the community. So being able to celebrate this person that has gone way above and beyond every year inspires me. And every time I think, wow, you know, I don't have time to do this or I don't have time to do that. I think back on these Andabuck Leadership Award winners and realize there's a whole lot more I could be doing out there in the community. They truly inspire me every year. So again, this is an aspect of the program that I hear a lot of people come away with. And it's funny when we do the year end evaluations, because to Eileen's point, we very much believe in the evaluation process and really hearing from the class about what worked and what didn't. Um, and this is something that pops up a lot. People say, wow, I really got so much out of the end of our leadership award. And so um, I think it's something that you would enjoy being involved in. Um, and it's truly fun. And a lot of times the groups that come together to form the nominations, really stay strong and connected. Um, along those lines too, um, we are gonna have our 40th anniversary party. Unfortunately, COVID-19 um, took away our original 40th party, which was gonna be in March. We rescheduled for November. So the nice part is those of you that get accepted into the program, you can come with us and be part of this 40th anniversary celebration that we're gonna have. Because one way or the other, we're gonna have it as soon as we're allowed to and get everybody together. Now, one of the areas here I really wanted to go over, and Eileen touched on this, and she gave you some really good advice. Um, if you are interested in applying, a few things you need to know. The application can be downloaded at leadershipgrandstrand.com. You do have to have lived in either Ori or Georgetown counties for one full year before you can apply for the program. So if you've only been here nine months, sorry, but, but think about us next year because we'd love to have you. We'll need three letters of reference. Get a lot of questions about the three letters of reference. Um, one of them can be from your business. Um, two of them though need to be from outside of your business. Um, it can be someone that you know in the community. I've had people's pastors write letters. Um, I've had the gamut, but anybody who you feel can write you a letter and really tell us about who you are as a person and why you would be a good addition to the program. Um, I'll be honest with you, if you don't think people read these, they do. It's not just a checkbox. We literally go through not only your application, but your letters. So really think about when you're doing a letter of reference or having somebody write it for you, who is somebody who's going to tell us about who you are? 
and not just send us a little form. Hey, I know them. They'd be great. You really want something that's meaningful there. So think about that as you're looking at those letters of reference. When you do the online application, you can actually um, really tell us about yourself too. Um, I've had a few people over the years who didn't get in and as we're talking about their application and giving them some advice for the future, they'd say, well, you know, I don't want to put that in there. I feel like I'm bragging if I, if I talk about this award I did or that I've been involved with this organization for five years straight and I've, I've worked my way up, to, you know, to be on the board. This is the time to put your best foot forward. When you fill out your application, I always tell everybody, it's one of those, those instances where I say everything but the kitchen sink. Tell us about who you are, what you've done, if you haven't had a chance to do a lot yet. Let's say that you're at the very beginning of your experience with community service and getting out there. Then tell us about what you want to do. Tell us about what your goals are. Tell us why you haven't been able to be involved. I've had a lot of folks talk about they had younger children and the children have just now gotten old enough where they feel like they now have some time to do this. That's okay, put that. Tell us about who you are because that's what we're interested in. For us, the composition of the class is just as important as anything else. So we're looking for interesting people who are gonna bring something to the program. So that's really what we want. So again, tell us everything. We wanna know all about it. Um, don't be afraid to you know, throw some extras in there if you feel like there's something that you wanna share with us that maybe we haven't asked outright. We do also have scholarships. Um, the cost to be involved in the program right now is $999. Um, but we do give away several um, scholarships throughout the year through the Bill Pritchard Scholarship Fund. Those scholarship um, applications are available at the exact same place on the website as you will find the applications. So if you need a scholarship, please do fill one of those out and submit that. Um, it is something that we're, we're proud to do and we're proud to do it in the name of Bill Pritchard, who was that founding person who went out to Leadership South Carolina and came home and brought the idea to the chamber to actually um, create this program. So we're very proud to do this in his name because he's just an amazing person. And I know in my life, especially, he's been a mentor to me and somebody that I really look up to. So we give out scholarships in his name and I highly encourage you, if you need a scholarship, fill it out. Um, there's some really good opportunities out there. And um, so I wouldn't let it go if you really do need it. This year, we've actually, um, we're gonna allow applications to come in through July the 17th. That is the drop dead date. So what you wanna do is fill out your application, get your three letters of reference, and then you can actually email those in to me, or you can actually, if you wanna snail mail it, that's okay too. I still do get some packages that way. Um, and really at that point, we will take them, we'll look them over, and then we actually have a selection committee that meets um, later in the month, and they're gonna actually help us choose the participants in the class. Again, we can take up to 33 people, but I will be honest with you, what we really look for is quality. So if we, if we find that 26 people are the right people for the program, that's what we'll choose. If we think that the, there are 33 and they're fantastic, of course we'll go there as well. So again, I highly encourage you, everything but the kitchen sink in that application. And keep in mind too, you actually have a resource. Eileen has all, I've said to you, you can reach out and talk to her and she'll help you. I'll do the same. I have a lot of people call me and read through and say, hey, I was getting ready to put this paragraph in. What do you think? Do you think I put my best foot forward? And I'm happy to help you with that or to give you advice. Um, my contact information is right here and I'm easy to find. You can also find all this on our website, leadershipgrandstrand.com. I'm very happy to go over anything with you and help. Eileen's point, this is a program where we're looking for the best of the best to get involved. And I think you would find that our alumni are the best of the best been some amazing things in the community really gotten involved and helped us grow and we hope that um, it's, this is something you're interested in um, at this point though I was going to open it up just to see if anybody has any questions or to see I think we might have a few graduates of the program who are here and to see if maybe they wanted to share any of their experiences with us so Dr. let's see and Dan Hoppy were both on yeah, so does anybody, would anybody like to share with us a little bit right now about their participation in the program or their thoughts? I have unmuted everybody. I was gonna say, Jessica, I unmuted you. No? No? All participants are unmuted. Well, we may be having some technical difficulties, y'all. 
Dan, well, I totally we're looking at you. So Dan, you can talk if you unmute yourself. There you go. Can you hear me? I can hear yes. you. Hey, yeah. excellent. Uh, no, I think, you know, when it comes to leadership grant strand program, um, kind of uh, Eileen can attest to this. I, I was one of these that came into the program and, and I had a little bit of leadership experience. I was actually getting a, a degree in a little leadership bit. studies. Right. But, <laughs> you know, there is always more to learn. There is always more ways to grow. Um, I can remember the first couple of days uh, thinking to myself, boy, I don't know how much new things I'm going to learn from this program. And, and every single class, the eyes got opened, the experiences got enhanced, and it truly turned into probably the most amazing program I've ever been part of. Um, I learned more in many ways through this program than I learned in several of my doctorate classes in leadership studies. And I think it was because of the experiences that everybody brings to the table. Um, as Eileen said, it is not just her up there talking, it's that collaborative approach to, to education. And um, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity. But again, I, as they both have stated, I cannot stress enough, uh, take that application very seriously um, and, and put as much in there. We want to know about you. We want to know why this is important to you. We want to know what experiences you bring to the table. Because as, as we've said, it is a collaborative learning environment. So we wanna make sure that we have the right people sitting around that table, the right people on the right bus and the right seats, right Eileen? And, and making sure- oh, good to great, way to quote a book for me. <laughs> she loves her book, by the way. But uh, again, we want to make sure we have, have the right mix of people that are going to contribute to this wonderful community that is Leadership Grand Strand. And uh, it's something that um, I'm glad I went through and I'm so honored to be part of as a Board of Regents member as well. Oh, thank you, Dan. And then Jessica, are you still with us? She may not be able to get on. Well, then wanted to find out um, if anybody had any questions for us that are out there. Um, if anybody has anything they'd like to know, we are here, Eileen or I or Dan can also um, come into that. So please um, let us know if anybody has any questions they'd like to find out about Leadership Grand Strand right now. Brooke has a question. I'm in North Myrtle Beach. Can I still join? Oh, definitely. Any Anybody who's in Ori or Georgetown County can jo join it. Yeah, we love it. Actually, we like to have people from all the different areas. Um, we usually have people from North Myrtle Beach. We have people down to, towards Polly's Island um, out in Ainer. We love it because you also then bring that piece of your community with you. And again, it's a great opportunity for us to learn more about the community. So yes, definitely. And Diana, someone's asking, is there a list of alumni anywhere? We do have a list, but we just don't publicize it for, because some people like to use that for sales. So uh, we do have a list, and especially mm -hmm. if you're in an organization, we can tell you who from your organization has participated in the past. And you can see the name of everyone that's gone through the program at the alumni area of Leadership Grand Strand. Again, we do not publish their, um, their information such as addresses or emails. But if you'd like to see a list, if you go into the Alumni Association tab on the website, it'll actually show you everybody that's gone through the program. I think another great way to get some insight about the program as well is if you go to Facebook and like the Leadership Grand Strand page, you'll see the multiple posts throughout the entire, not just this past year, but that's historical. So you can see several years past worth of posts, the types of activities they've done, the, the folks that have interacted with that. And I think it's a great way as well to kind of get some perspective of what the program is all about. Definitely great point. Wonderful. Well, y'all, we really appreciate you coming in and, um, and listening to us as we talked about Leadership Grand Strand. I hope that some of you are inspired to um, put in your applications. I can't wait to read them. It's always wonderful to read them and then to actually meet the people in person. It's exciting every year. So um, again, please do feel free to reach out to any of us. We are a resource for you and we do want to help you with it. Again, my contact information, you can find it on the site. Um, leadershipgrandstrand.com. Um, I think Dan gave you a great idea, like our Facebook page. We do a lot of postings on there. And um, anyway, we look forward to hearing from you more. So again, if, you, if you'd like, feel free to call me directly and I'll be happy to help you with anything. Thanks everybody for coming today. More questions. So I'll just, oh, yeah. um, roughly what kind of weekly, monthly time commitment would be expected for events? You have your Thursday class, whether that's in the community or a leadership, 
Uh, no, I'll, Dan, you'll crack me up. Please know that on your Thursdays, after the Thursday class, or you go visit city government, that Thursday is usually a fellowship event after class. Social interaction, yes, yes. So there's that. Every Thursday, count on that. Um, and then you'll have your, your hours that you'll find that you lean towards a group or your and a Bach group will meet during the week. Definitely. Um, Dan, how many hours would you say a week that you gave? Now, you're the overachiever, which is why you're on the Board of Regents. But what would you say for a, a newcomer? What could they expect? You know, aside from the obviously the, the, the class uh, experience that you're going to have once a month, you know, the more you can build in those volunteer service hours early on. I tried to, I looked at the 75 hours that were required and then I took a look at how I could have those accomplished by say February 1. Now knowing that I had some wiggle room to have those completed and kind of divided it up from there. Um, you know, if you take a look at some of the books that Eileen suggest and, and you say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to try and get through one or two of these um, uh, throughout the program. It, it really isn't a lot of time outside of the class that you have to dedicate um, to it. But, but obviously the more you put in, the more you're going to get out of it. And that's just like anything. Um, but the big thing is, is, is taking a look at those service hours and finding the best way to kind of divvy those out. And, and really when you get into the program, the board of regents and, and those that have been through it will help you identify the best way to kind of tackle that and, and work through accomplishing those. Yeah, and y'all keep in mind too, you, we actually, um, for each one of the projects, class members become team leaders on those projects. And so they're able to then feed you information about opportunities to come out and work at Habitat for Humanity in the store to actually do a build, whatever it may be. So your class is very engaged and we make you part of that leadership process. Um, so that's kind of a, a neat way for you to be involved as well. And it's, a, again, another way to kind of connect. So keep in mind, it, this is split up over the course of all of these months. If you think about 75 project hours over the course of nine months, it's not so bad. Um, and also, one of the things we do to help you is we actually kind of set up a little grid where we say, you know, by this point in the year, you should have gotten 10 or 15, you know, hours in. Why we do that, because one of the things we found years ago is that we do have a few people who are procrastinators. So to help them along, we sort of created a little timeline that sort of says, hey, make sure you've gotten this many hours by now, just so you won't be stressed out and get in a situation where you're concerned. We do try and help you with that. And trust me, there's always something you can volunteer for. So getting your hours is not hard at all. Yeah, I'd have to say, quite frankly, that went much quicker than I ever thought. You look at that number of 75 and you're like, oh my gosh, but uh, quite frankly, it, it goes really quick and you have a lot of fun while completing those hours. It's true. Wonderful. Any other questions coming through? Nope. I just asked if there were any other questions because I'm happy to respond to them or yield to you. Uh, okay, someone just raised their hand, so I'm trying to figure. All right. All right. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, my name is Neto Minkillo. Um I have a question in regards to youth. I actually, I have three kids, and my oldest is turning 10, and I think that sort of age, it's a great time to start volunteering. Do you guys uh, partner with any um, non-for-profit or anything that we can serve as a uh, dad and daughter kind of thing where we can bring kids into the volunteering? Actually, yeah, we get asked this a lot. Um, it depends on the organization. Some of them do have activities that you're able to bring people who are under 18 too, but some of them actually do have some age restrictions based on the fact of liability. So it just depends on the, um, the organization you get involved in. So some of them, yes, you probably would be able to do a few things, but some of them, unfortunately, just for legal and liability issues, aren't able to. But um, I, I know I'm the same way. I'm always looking for something. My daughter's 16 now. I'm always looking for something to get her engaged in. So she's helped me a lot on adopt a highways, um, different things along those lines. Um, but yeah, I can definitely share with you um, at another time. Maybe we can talk about some of the other organizations I've found that we can do things with, um, with people who are under the age of 18. Thank you. And Brooke has a question. Does volunteer have to be a specific place? Now, Brooke, I'm assuming that you're asking, meaning your volunteer hours, those do need to be approved just because 
there are certain guidelines that are put in place so that if you were already going to your church and doing that on Sunday anyway, there's some guidelines that Diana has for you. I'll yield to Diana to kind of touch on that. Yeah, we do have a certain amount of hours that are actually assigned. Um, so some of them, it might be that throughout the course of a year, you need to do 10 hours at Habitat for Humanity or 10 hours at New Directions. But we give you usually between 20 to 25 hours that are what we call personal hours. These are things that you're already involved in. You're already doing them. Um, and they could be really neat, or maybe, which I think is even better, maybe they're things that you've been interested in, but you've never really kind of bit down and said, I'm going to do it. That's what we really love is when you say, okay, great, I want to go do this. Um, one thing I have found though is over the years, I always seem to have a lot of folks who come through Leadership Grand Strand who are coaches. Um, it's really neat. Um, they're out coaching um, a softball team or a lacrosse or something along those lines. And um, I have had a lot of them use um, some of their personal hours for those coaching activities. So yes, you can do something if you are involved. Um, I'm involved in Rotary, for instance. So we have specific activities. Um, a Rotary meeting doesn't count as, as hours, but if I'm off with my Rotary and we're doing a community service project, then those hours could apply to what you're doing. So yes, we do give you some personal hours to put in, but then some are required to go out and learn about the project that we put forth to you. So it's a bit of both. I think yeah. it's important to note too, uh, Diana mentioned Habitat for Humanity, which is a fantastic opportunity, but, but even when we designate a certain project that you have to put hours to, there are still a lot of options. Like maybe some folks just aren't comfortable swinging a hammer. And, and so for example, then they can go work at the Habitat Restore and, and those kinds of things. So regardless of what project you have, last year I know we worked with New Directions, Habitat for Humanity and Horry County Schools. There were so many different options that people could choose that they found something they were comfortable with while still giving back to that particular organization. Yeah, and that helps too. If you have any issues, I've had a few people over the years who might have some physical issues or concerns, and we've always been able to find a way for them to contribute. And I think that's just an important lesson for us all to learn as well, is that, you know, sometimes we don't think we can help or we can be involved for whatever reason. And um, the program, I think, is very empowering in that it teaches you that you can. You have something to give, um, and we can help you find that and um, put you in the right spot. Any other questions? These have been great ones. Yeah, good questions. Um, I don't see any coming through yet, but Adam, Ashley, Dana, Emily, Gentry, Kathy, any of you who want to put a question up, that's why we're here. Lori, hi, Lori. See, that's what I do in class, too. I get to know your names and call you out. <laughs> She's really good at it. <laughs> but I want everyone to be included, fairness and equity. Wonderful. All right, I don't see any other questions, but I don't wanna turn anyone off. All right, I think we're, I don't see any dots going. Hey Diana Wonderful. and Eileen, there is somebody raising their hand, so I'm gonna allow oh. them to talk. All right, let me see where's the raise hand. Kathy. Yeah, actually I do have a question. Um, ages um i'm you know uh it seems that a lot of the uh, class you're looking for or the people are a lot younger than i am um no okay it's all right go ahead <laughs> I say, actually i think what you'll find is that the class is very diverse in age um one of my favorite classes was class 28 um i loved them all don't get me wrong but 28 was really fun because we had people in the class who were 22 years old up to 74 years old. And it was one of the best classes. I saw them sharing so much across generations and understanding things that, um, that they even said, wow, you know what, having these different ages and points of view helps us. So no, honestly, what we want is we love to have, of course, anybody come into the program. Um, I think it, whether, wherever you are in your leadership journey, you can also get something out of the program. So please know um, we want everybody, whether you're 22 to 74 and, and beyond, we would love to have you in the program. And it's really set up to assist and to help any of us grow. I grow every single year that we go through the program. Um, I learn something, there's a new technique I get involved in. And I frequently, I had one of my employees the other day tell me that she said, you know, the reason I think that you're a good boss, which was really sweet, um, was 
that she said that you go through this program every year. You're constantly learning and growing. And I was like, you know what? She's probably right. It probably, I think it is leadership grand strand that helps me out so much. So please don't let that stop you. I hope that you will put in your application because we yeah. love to have people of all different ages. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with leadership programs. Um, I'm a graduate of uh, Leadership Prince William from um, 2010. So back up in Virginia. Right. So I am familiar with these, uh, with, with the program. So. And that's right. what we look for too, is you, you know, someone with that experience can help mentor and guide some of the newer leaders. So I always believe, you know, know what lane you're in and, and stay in that lane and help those who need to get there one day. So I'm all about that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that concern and question. Okay. That's a great one. All right. Any other ones? I'm looking for any hands up. Uh, Brooke has a question. Uh, does this help us move forward in our careers? Oh, wow. Great question. Yes, it will. Um, a lot of what you're going to learn in the class, whether we're out um, in the community learning about how things work, getting connections there, um, those are some great things. I'll be honest with you. The connections alone would help you in your work. But one of the neat things I think you'll find about Eileen's leadership training is it not only helps you with personal growth, but she gives you a lot of things you can take directly back and work on at your job. Um, I know I've had every year, Eileen, tell me if I'm wrong, everybody with a self profile. We have so many people that say, hey, I want to take this. I want to take what I learned and take it back to work. So maybe you'd like to address that. When it never fails. When we do the self assessment and I say, anyone have any questions? I get can I have an extra copy to do this with my girlfriend? Can I get a copy to do this with my spouse? Can I get my boss to do this? And then I get asked, can I do this with my staff? And I'll coach them on how to take it back and do it with their team. Um, so trust me, your boss, especially if they are paying for it, wants to make sure that this learning is transferable. They don't want you just sitting in a class and just volunteering your hours. I'm sure your boss wants to make sure that there's some benefits there for the home team. Um, but I will be very honest. It is like Dan said, it is up to the individual. If you take it back and share it with your team, it will help your careers. But if you sit there in class thinking, I know it all, or I don't need to know more about sanitation, yet there could be a political referendum about said. It really grows you in ways you don't realize till about six months later and you go, oh my gosh, I know this and I know that now and I didn't at the time. So there is a lot of career growth and I do wanna echo strongly what Diana said about the networking and connections. Yes. I was just bragging on LGS, a, a, two weeks ago, someone was asking me about it. And I have a friend who her dentist is from LGS, her attorney is from LGS, her chiropractor is from LGS. I just had someone call me last week saying, Eileen, we're getting ready to put in a pool. Did anyone who go through LGS, are they a pool contractor, builder? I want to help the people in LGS. It becomes a pool of we all work together and we want to support LGS businesses, uh, the connections. Even I get people who will call me and say, Eileen, I'm going through this in my career. Do you have anyone? I'll be like, class 36, I know the perfect person who could be a mentor to you. The networking, you, I've lived in this town since 98. You will not find a better networking and connections piece as a professional other than LGS. So not only does it help you with your careers, it helps you to position yourselves, especially if you're new in the area. You better, success walks hand in hand with success. So I encourage you to see this as a very pivotal moment for your careers and personally developing. And I can speak to that personally. I, I've only been in the Myrtle Beach area for four years, and I feel more connected to this community in the last four years than I did in my previous community for almost 30 years. And and I 100% and I attribute that to, to my experiences with LGS. 
as I put on my chamber hat, I have to tell you, we really look towards the LGS program participants and who kind of are the superstars as people that we really want to target to get involved in our committees, councils, and our board of directors here at the chamber. So again, is definitely something that's going to help you professionally. And what I love is it helps you personally and professionally. Um, the self profiles to Eileen's point, you can take them home and use them on a spouse or family, or you can take them into work and help build your team. So many of these skills, I think you can really utilize either way. So, and I've had people who've kind of come into the program and some of them are looking for more personal growth. And I've been pleased that they felt really good about it. But on the professional side, I tell you, it's something that if you're, um, if you're, if your boss or whomever your HR department is um, looking as to whether or not they should pay for this it is definitely worth their time. And uh, we have a question of someone had applied at the beginning of May. Will there be an acknowledgement of receipt of application? Just want to make sure it was received. Well, you should have already gotten that. So um, how about this? Whoever you are out there, um, give me a call today, 843-916-7222. Um, and let's make sure I, that it's come in um, because I, I usually send out a receipt as soon as we get them now. That's actually one of the things we started a couple years ago. So please do contact me directly and I will be happy to um, look about that for you. Um, Brooke asked, is this expensive? Um, the, the total application, it's 999? Yes. So $999. Now some businesses will pay for that for their employees, but as you see more uh, self-run businesses, independent entrepreneurs, they will sometimes pay for that themselves or apply for scholarships. So know that there is that scholarship if that is something that would um, help you to apply for the program. Definitely. Worth every penny, but I'm biased. <laughs> um, if we aren't accepted for this next class, should we apply again in the future? That is a great question. Diana, I'll let you know. Yes, yes, yes. My answer is yes, yes, yes. Um, for a few reasons. One, obviously you're gonna learn from going through the application process. Anytime we do anything like that, we learn and we grow from it. Um, but also one of the things that not everybody knows is we really take into account if somebody has applied and they didn't get into the class on a particular year, but they come back, whether it's the next year or a couple years later. Um, and on the application, it asks you if you've applied before. Um, we really take and kind of put that person in a special place because we say, wow, they were willing to come back. They wanted to come back and try and get into the class. So yes, I highly encourage you apply again because we do give you a little extra star for having come back and applied for a second time. So I would highly encourage you to do so. But again, you'll learn a lot just going through the process. Now, granted, if your application is one word answers, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> and it just does not represent the quality integrity of our program, then someone should probably tell you your second or third time, your application is not good. So you know yes. that we'll probably help you too. So if you feel like, hey, why did I not get in? We want, we want, to, we want everyone to be successful. So feel free to reach out and there might be a reason. Maybe you just didn't answer or didn't get attached or, so please feel free to reach out. And keep in mind too, we actually contact you and you, we, you have the opportunity, we go over with you what, was, what it was in your application that didn't quite help you move forward in this time. So we really will help you. One of the things that, again, I encourage you to do though that could help you right up front as you're putting in your application is really think through. There's a the question about what is your concept of leadership? Think about it. Um, really kind of look some things up. Um, who are you? What do you wanna see as a leader? What do you respect in leaders? write us a paragraph to Eileen's point. Don't, don't write a sentence. Don't give us a yes, no. Um, I don't know. Leaders, you know, leaders are great. No, don't do that. Um, really think, you know, this is a chance for you to also look inside yourself and think what is important to me? What do I want to, who do I want to be? Um, so I encourage you really use that application and fill it out. Um, you'll get a lot out of it too. Great question. Yeah. Anything else? I don't see any other questions in the chat box. I'm looking for any hands up. Not at this point. All right, I think we are good. I don't see any others. Wonderful. Well, again, I want to thank all of you for coming in and learning about Leadership Grand Strand today. 
Um, we loved having you here. We're here for you. We're a resource. Feel free to contact any of us. Um, we want to help you out with it. And I can't wait to see your application. So I'm looking forward to that. Take care, everybody.